All right, good evening. The time is now 7.01 and I would like to call to order the September 1st, 2022 Parent Community Advisory Council special meeting. Uh, the purpose of this initial meeting is to organize the PCAC Parent and Community Advisory Council um, and this meeting will be recorded and it is on the PGCPS board webpage for the public to view. Again, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who took the time to apply to be a part of the PCAC. And, you know, we are really looking forward to your great work uh, on this committee. And I am very grateful to the board staff that worked really hard to revitalize this committee. Um, again, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Shayla Adam Stafford. I am the uh, District 4 representative here in Prince George's County, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm so excited for us to begin this work uh, together. So I'm just going to ask that <clears throat> when you're not speaking, that you're um, having your self on mute, uh, and we just appreciate you being here uh, tonight. And so I wanted to actually start off by just taking a moment uh, to talk a bit about the sort of purpose of this group. Um, and then we will do an um, introduction of all of the members for the community. Um, and then after that, we'll talk a little bit about um, sort of the first orders of business, which will be to review some suggested bylaws. Um, that's one of the first things that you all will do as a group is develop your bylaws. Um, and then we will have election of officers, <clears throat> is, is especially um, the chair and vice chair um, and recording secretary. And I think that's all we'll have time for tonight. <laughs> and then we'll come back together uh, in uh, next month and we'll have that date for you in just a moment. <clears throat> So I uh, just wanted to, again, read uh, the charge of this group. Um, you all are a standing advisory committee uh, created to advise and report to the board. Um, so the purpose of this group is to ensure that the Prince George's County Board of Education um, and the CEO are informed by a variety of opinions from citizens and staff when considering specific issues, policies, activities, and programs. <clears throat> So the PCAC is going to um, report directly to the board. You really are serving as a channel for public concerns, um, advice and information to reach the board. Um, so PCAC will receive um, information from the community about concerns or inquiries or matters um, within the province of the board and research issues that might be appropriate. So really thinking about how you all will go out and bring forward some of the countywide challenges or issues that we're facing and then work together either through forming smaller committees or you know focusing on sort of one major issue at a time um, and, and really helping to conduct that research uh, and, and gathering information so that the board um, can make informed decisions and in presenting a report to us. <clears throat> So you're really going to serve in an advisory capacity. Um, and, and that's important to understand uh, that you will be advising the board. Um, and, and we really will be listening uh, to what you bring back to us. So again, I just want to thank you again to our, our newly appointed members, um, our board office staff, we have um, our chief of staff, Jode Newsom here. We have Mia Barton and Rosa Lopez who've worked to make this meeting possible. All right, so I am going to now introduce our members. And so I'll introduce you, uh, your role, your name, where you're um, coming from. And if you wanna just say a quick sentence about yourself, you're more than welcome to. All right, so our first CEO designee is Dr. Sheila Jackson. Wow, I didn't know I was going first. Thank you so much, right. <laughs> um, everyone. Uh, good evening. I am the director for our Department of Family and School Partnerships. Uh, I'm delighted to be asked to be here. Uh, I have uh, my husband graduated from Prince George's County Public Schools. We have four adult children now who come through Prince George's County Public Schools. And um, 
uh, the long ago iteration of this committee, I served as a staff member that supported it. So I am just so excited to see the rebirth, the regeneration of the PCAC in Prince George's County here to support you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. <clears throat> so now we are second CEO designee is Ms. Robin Walsh. Good evening. It is uh, a pleasure to be able to have the opportunity to serve on this committee. I am the uh, Director of Government Relations, Compliance and Procedures, and actually do a lot of policy work and write policies for the Board of Education. So um, what, this is a policy that we actually did work on. And so I'm very excited now to see that the committee is up and running and that we'll be able to fulfill what the policy intended it to do. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Robin. All right, so we have um, with us, and I just wanna make sure that I'm gonna read some names and folks that they may not be here at this time, but they will be joining us in future meetings. Uh, we have from the faith-based community, we have um, Reverend Dr. Orlando Jermaine Bego, and we have from the civic community, um, we have Councilwoman uh, Carletta Lundy, if you could introduce yourself. Hey, yes, first of all, I am so happy to be here, pleased to be here, and I do apologize that I'm not on camera, and that's because of my technology issues. I wasn't able to log in with my phone, so I do apologize for that. Um, so I am a former council member from the town of Bladensburg. I'm currently the secretary for the NAACP branch of Prince George's County. In my role as a councilwoman, I work um, extensively with schools in our district, which is District 47. Um, so I'm just happy to be here and happy to be a part of this great team and looking forward to doing the work. All right, thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much. Representing our business community is Mr. Will Epps. Good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my, my name is Will Epps. Thank you, uh, Sheila, for the introduction uh, that you, this is great to be here. Um, you know, I guess the business community for me, I have a, what I want to call uh, an infant stage um, business who is a minority business enterprise by the state of Maryland and that also I have my uh, Prince George's County uh, public school certification as well as a minority business. Um, my background is really in real estate and investing and construction, mm -hmm. uh, but I have um, two kids, my wife and I, married for 11 years, have two children at uh, uh, Prince George's County Schools and Whitehall Elementary, a kindergarten and third grader. And for me, this role, um, I'm thankful that uh, I did receive the opportunity to serve here, uh, but this role is also for me to really get more fathers involved um, and the, um, and whatever this is, I, you know, uh, I want to be a part of it. I want to help us grow. I care about kids. I think, you know, if, if, uh, fathers know how to love properly, um, if everyone else knows how to love properly, that's not just men, but, uh, it's important to me to get fathers involved. And I have a team of dads who, um, knows that, um, that, that I'm in this and, and I want to bring them along with me um, and I want really, my job is to kind of run point and be a conduit to bring fresh ideas to help our children from a father's perspective so that we can do as best for our county. Thank you so much, Will. We're glad to have you here. Representing District 1, and I wanna make sure I'm saying your name properly. Uh, we have, um, please, please uh, pronounce your name. I don't wanna say it uh, improperly. It's Halise Wood. Yes, we have Ms. Talise Wood representing District 1. You can go ahead. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Talise Wood. I'm a teacher with Prince George's County Public Schools. This is my seventh year. I teach third grade at Deerfield Run. My youngest of two daughters is a graduate of Prince George's County Public Schools. She was a pandemic baby, unfortunately, and graduated from Laurel High. And I'm also a resident of Prince George's County. I'm honored to serve on this committee and look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Awesome. All right, representing District 2, we have Ms. Adrienne Mayo Brown. Hello, how's everyone tonight? Um, my name is Adrienne. I have a 12 year old son who attends Prince George's County Pub, uh, Public Schools. He's in uh, seventh grade, 
at Greenbelt Middle School, um, assuming I survived these tween years <laughs> and he survives it. Um, I look forward to him continuing in Prince George's County Public Schools. Um, I also work for the University of Maryland College of Education in the Teaching, Learning, Policy, and Leadership Department, which uh, focuses on teacher ed and certification and stuff like that. So I'm the Director of Administrative Services there. So I'm surrounded by education, and I'm looking forward to seeing what way you know I can I can serve and, and be a part of the education community a little bit more. Thank you so much, Ms. Brown. All right, representing District Three, we have Mr. T. Carter Ross. Hello, and thank you very much. I'm I'm pleased to be part of this group, and I look forward to all the uh, the good work that we're going to be able to do to help our students. Um, I am based in Hyattsville and have I'm coming towards the end of my uh, time as a PGCPS parent. The kids, uh, the oldest, just started college um, two weeks ago at St. Mary's, and uh, my youngest is a junior at uh, the Academy of Health Sciences at PGCC right now. Uh, but they came up through Hyattsville Elementary, Hyattsville Middle. Um, the older one just graduated last year from Northwestern. And, um, you know, been pleased and amazed and occasionally frustrated <laughs> throughout that journey. Um, but, um, you know, I've, I've been involved with the Hyattsville City Education Advisory Committee, the PTAs, PTOs here, and uh, look forward to continuing to um, try to find ways to help um, our schools excel for all of our children. Thank you so much, Mr. Ross. All right. And let's see, do we have, um, I think uh, our district four representative, our district four representative is Ms. Keisha Thorpe. And I don't think she's with us right now. Uh, we'll move on to district five, uh, Mr. Clarence Dixon. Uh, yes, uh, good evening uh, everyone. My name is Clarence Dixon. I am so excited to be a part of this uh, amazing group. I am a, uh, a resident of Prince George's County for over uh, 20 years. I have a nine-year-old <laughs> Prince George's County Public School. She attends Heather Hills Elementary School TAG program and a uh, first grader that attends Kenilworth Elementary School. Uh, I've served in Prince George's County as a, uh, uh, as a teacher, now at work, come, work out of the office of pupil, uh, pupil personnel student services. So I, service kids all around Prince George's County as it relates to uh, five different schools. So I'm excited about that to bring that experience uh, uh, to this amazing group. And I look forward to doing uh, great work and uh, so we can have an amazing outcome. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry for that little interruption there. I was trying to get people to join us on Facebook. <laughs> And so I was posting the link, so sorry about that. But thank you so much um, for representing District 5, Mr. Dixon. All right, so District 6, we have Ms. Teria Hollinshed joining us. Um, good afternoon. Thank you once again for the opportunity. Much like everyone else, I am very excited to be part of the, um, the committee. My daughter is a seventh grader in District 6 at James Madison um, in Upper Marlboro. I joined the committee or I applied to join the committee because I am a licensed social worker and I want to see change in the schools. I really feel like Prince George's County is a great place. And when I moved to this area 16 years ago, people had a lot to say. So I had a great experience in Prince George's County and I want to see that experience continue for others as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's move over to District 7. We have Ms. Dolores Millhouse. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Dolores Millhouse, and my, I live in District 7, but my children actually attend the Language Immersion Schools, Kettering Middle School, the Spanish Immersion Program, and Phyllis e. Williams Spanish Immersion. So I have actually um, been at the business of advocating for public education for the past 11 years. Um, I have spearheaded the work that has allowed PECPS to expand the program, to have the Spanish as well as Mandarin um, programs that they have in place. And um, my focus definitely to be a part of this board was really to make sure that we understand that the testing data that we have can be utilized to help close a lot of these academic gaps. 
in that Dr. Jackson office is probably one of the key offices in this school district that is underutilized in helping every parent to understand their role as partners in education. So um, I'm excited. I've been, you know, I think I've touched bases with every department at PGCPS. And so now I'm here, as I say, behind the velvet rope. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Millhouse. Um, representing District 8, we have Ms. Kyra Walker. Good evening. Uh, I am Kira Walker, and oh, sorry. I am, uh, no worries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I am a, a resident of Prince George's County. I'm also a, a public school educator. I started my educational teaching career. I'm a career changer, but I did start my teaching career at Friendly High School in Prince George's County Public Schools. I have three children, two of them are of school age. Um, my oldest attends Oxen Hill High School and then my middle child attends Maya Angelou French Immersion where I've always um, been very um, active with the PTA um, in various settings. So I am in my profession, I am um, a teacher coach. So I, I coach teachers, but I'm also an advocate. I am a, an advocate for twice exceptional students. So that is my mm. professional role to advocate in uh, for twice exceptional students, which means you're gifted and you have some type of specific learning disability or IEP or 504. And um, my goal is to always make sure that all children have a voice and that um, the educational system provides them with the support that they need to thrive and grow. So I thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we have District 9, Dr. Sharon Porter. Greetings, everyone. I am Sharon H. Porter. I'm a resident of District 9, Brandywine, um, Maryland, and also the proud principal of Rose Valley Elementary School in Fort Washington. I'm excited um, to be a part of this. I'm just really ready to get in and do the work of this uh, council. So thank you for having me. All right, thank you. Um, so Ms. Barton, I'm not sure if you've been keeping track. Uh, <laughs> I know that next is for us to do the roll call, um, but if you want to go ahead, we can go ahead and do the roll call and then determine if we have a quorum. Okay, we will do. Thank you. Mr. Clarence Dixon. Present. Mr. Will Epps. Present. Ms. Centuria Hollinshed. Present. Dr. Sheila Jackson. Present. Ms. Carletta Lundy. Present. Ms. Adrian Mayo Brown. Present. Ms. Dolores Milhouse. Present. Dr. Sharon Porter. Present. Mr. T. Carter Ross. Present. Ms. Keisha Thorpe. Ms. Kyra Walker. Kira Walker, present. I'm sorry. I'm present. <laughs> this is Robin Welsh. I see your lips. <laughs> present. I'm present. Ms. Talise Wood. Present. Mrs. Adam Stafford. Present. Okay. Thank you. We have a quorum, eight members. All right. Um, so may I have a motion to adopt the September 1st, 2022 special meeting agenda? So moved. All moved. right. A second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. All right. So I'd like um, to actually uh, talk a bit about our action items um, under 2.0. Um, so that's what we, where we will move to next. Um, so you all were emailed um, some, some suggested bylaws to review. And I wanted to first just acknowledge just an understanding that these were our suggested bylaws and that, you know, after you all establish 
uh, your leadership, you can also change them. But we wanted to help you all get off to a good start. Um, and so these are some suggested bylaws here. And so I wanted to see um, if I may have a motion to adopt the suggested um, PCAC bylaws. And we can have some discussion um, as well before uh, we um, pass or vote on this. So I, can we, um, am I to move to have discussion now? You can vote? say, you can say so, you can say so moved and then right. you can have a second. And then after that, I'll open it up for discussion. Ms. Milhouse. Okay. So moved. You wanna move? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you gonna have a second? I just want to be clear on direction. So the move is to discuss. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to just we can just we can discuss it. Yes. And then, yeah, we can we can go from there. Okay. Can can I have a second? A second. Second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there any discussion? And I, I do have a point to discuss as well. Okay, go ahead, uh, Miss Lundy. Yes, thank you. So um, very good first um, draft of our um, four suggested bylaws. Um, and I do look forward to us, you know, talking about it more. But I wanted to include in the bylaws, if we could, the scope of work for the different advisory councils, for example, um, the different, you know, components like the civic and community, because I needed to know how far I could go, how wide it is, or what have you. Uh -huh. And is it only focused in my particular district where I live in Prince George's County? Or is it for the whole over 200 and something schools or, or you know, the, all the districts? So I think that should be spelled out in our bylaws, the scope of our responsibility. That's a really good point. And I would just say that I think that you all are representing your community, but you want to approach um, this work thinking about what are some countywide issues um, that may be prevalent in your community and you're bringing the, those to the forefront. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, I agree with uh, uh, Ms. Lindy. I, I too uh, have some suggestions. <clears throat> I think that one core component that you all should include in your bylaws or should consider uh, would be to consider uh, being like very um, specific about your reporting. So um, one suggestion would be to have some wording, something similar to, you know, on a minimum or a quarterly or maybe a biannual basis, you would submit a written report to the board and make or make a presentation um, at a public meeting to provide a summary of your activities, your progress, your goals, sort of what you're working on. Um, and I think that that would be a good kind of goalpost for the team to say, you know, okay, our report we're gonna do, we're gonna work on maybe these four issues or this issue until December, then issue a report, then we'll work on these issues until May and then issue a report. But I think having that outlined in your bylaws uh, would kind of give you just like, okay, what are we working towards? <laughs> you know, give some structure there. And that was one of the, um, that was a piece of feedback that we received from folks that were on the um, group last time. Okay, and, I, um, and as, since we're on talking about reporting, mm -hmm. um, also it says the written report, is there already a standing format for those reports? Mm -hmm. I do believe you could look at what has been done before. However, what I would say, I think you should also look at like what other counties do as well and kind of maybe draft a template that works for this group. And maybe that's something that like the recording secretary could do some research on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts about the bylaws? Yes. Um, so an um, article two on purpose, and I know it was mentioned as it relates to the scope of work, mm -hmm. but when we're talking about it serves as a channel for, <clears throat> excuse me, public concerns. Um, at this point, what, what I would like to know in the years that I've been working with the school district, um, I never really saw the channel to send public concerns to the PCAT. 
or pack or however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. So um, was there something that I may have overlooked or, you know, if not, then that's something that I definitely would suggest we kind of determine um, like you're saying, you're sharing it on Facebook, right? You're sharing the meeting on Facebook right now. Mm -hmm. How are we communicating to the body that these meetings are happening and that we do exist and we're here for the people versus trying to just do it word of mouth? Yeah. And, and what I'll say is that I think bylaws may not get into that level right. of detail, but right. I think that it could create some parameters. Like it could say like, you know, each member is responsible for bringing back research from their community. And research could look like a Facebook poll. It could look like going to some, you know, you know, PTA meetings. It could look like, you know, inviting people to speak, but you're, you're bringing this information back to the committee. Let's mm -hmm. say you all decide to focus on, you know, school safety and security as like a big issue that you want to focus on. You want the board policies to really mm -hmm. focus on then you all would, you know, that committee would go out and maybe the, your bylaws could give some kind of guardrails on mm -hmm. sort of what, <clears throat> what you should be doing to, to, to get that information from the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I, I, um, I didn't want to make it seem like I was implying, like we needed some level of detail for that, because I know it can't get that granular as mm -hmm. A, a bylaw overarching policy of, you know, right? So we're not talking about desk procedures pretty much, right. um, mm -hmm. but it was more so trying to understand like it serves as a channel for public concerns um, that seems very broad. So for us to mention something like that, you know, I wanted to really understand and maybe that's not part of the bylaws. Is there something already in place where that's being handled right now? I mean, I know we have the board let meeting. Me, let me the, let me uh, yeah. I may be able to provide some information there. So yeah, we we do have um, at the school system level, uh, we have like resolution centers. Um, yeah, and school, school system uh, leaders can you know help me here with this. We do have resolution centers that can bring if that you know receive a ton of information from parents. Um, we do have other reports that share with us across the district, like what parents are concerned about. Uh -huh. um, and so that's all data that you all, I'm pretty sure can access <laughs> um, as part of this group. And you could take that and, and maybe use that if it you know pertains to what your focus is. Um, I'm yeah. gonna uh, let uh, Mr. Ross have a moment here to um, uh -huh. have some discussion and then we can, we can continue after that. Yeah, I, I just want to sort of follow up on what Ms. Millhouse was saying, because um, I think it might be important to make sure that we have clarity in the bylaws that we don't just receive uh, from the community, but that we can also engage and seek from the community. I mean, in when this was announced and um, you know, I got the word that I was going to be on it, I started reaching out to PTAs, the schools in the district. And just to try and and hear, you know, if if some let people know, hey, if you've got some concerns or questions or something's going on at your school, um, you know, I, I'd like to help be a conduit to to bring that forward. Um, so I, I just would want to make sure the clarity in the bylaws that that we are you know, not engaged in like massive investigations or something, but that we can seek out input as well as receive it. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think that would be good. And so I think what I'm hearing is maybe there are kind of two areas that we could maybe hone in on a bit. Um, so number one, um, maybe uh, drafting a paragraph that talks a little bit more about your your actual uh, maybe written responsibilities that will serve as that goalpost or when your presentations will be. And then number two, a bit more clarity around just sort of what it means to be a channel of information or a liaison um, and just providing some language that will provide some more clarity there. Those are the two things that I'm hearing right now. Um, Ms. Walker? Yes, um, I did um, wanted to mention as you have mentioned before, I think in, um, I believe it's article two, I need to go back to my screen, where it says uh, the, the board, uh, the, the PCA 
seashell advise and report directly to the board i think we should set or establish some type of guidelines on how often we provide a written report mm -hmm. to the board be yeah. it you know quarterly be it mm -hmm. um semi-annually you know every six months but there should be some regular communication um to the board other than just getting on the agenda as it is stated in the articles um so that mm -hmm. they can see that we are a working committee that we are doing the outreach work for the community but it also documents our uh, our progress as a, a committee to assist and be advocates for the community I agree. I agree. We, we need to, I think, drill down on that piece as well. I'm going to go to Dr. Porter next, and then I think I have an idea of a motion that can help us to move this forward. Okay, thank you. I just had um, two um, questions, actually. Starting mm -hmm. with Article 6, um, the terms of office. Um, after the two years, does the app, does the process remain the same as far as applying? Like how, what happens after the two years? Mm -hmm that's really not clear anything. Yeah, so maybe that's a section that we need to fine tune. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I actually have that in one of the paragraphs that I sent to Mia as well that I think we need to, you know, be uh, more clear about, you know, the, the process of the application. Um, so that's a good point, Dr. Porter. What was your other point as well? Yeah, so the other point is those of us who work um, for the district, um, since I, I guess I don't want to blur the roles, basically, mm -hmm. So when we are reaching out or doing our research, is that um, on a personal um, email or is that, are we able to do that on our mm -hmm. school district email? That's a good question. I, I think you're in this capacity. Um, I, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. I don't know that I have a, a good answer for that, but I think as a principal, you, you get so much information all the time from c the community about so many different things. I think it's, it would be, <clears throat> you know, probably very easy for you to, you know, be able to bring back to the group perspectives from the community and, have maybe some low stakes opportunities for parents to engage around a topic. Like if you all take on an issue like testing or grading or whatever, you could probably very easily convene like teachers and just ask, you know, what are your thoughts on this? And then bring bring that okay. back. I, I don't really foresee that as being a major issue. Okay. Dr. Jackson? Yes, uh, hi. Uh, one of the things, and I don't see it addressed in, and I'm thinking that Perhaps we need to put put language in that we pay attention to the diversity of our district. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if that goes in the bylaws or if that goes where in the policy. Um, mm -hmm. But we might want to think about some language there to encourage, you know, diverse representation. You know, I think that was one of the um, pieces of feedback that we received when revitalizing the policy. And they had some, some suggestions around demographics. I'll have to pull that up and maybe I can talk to Robin about this. Okay. Um, but one of the specific changes was to, of course, or specific recommendations was to have representation from each district. Okay. Um, so that was, I guess, aimed at doing that, but we certainly could do even better. Yeah. Um, so one thing I'm thinking here, and you all let me know what you think, <clears throat> what if, uh, we make a motion to table the approval of the bylaws until our next meeting, but ask people to submit um, suggest, you know, suggested changes. Um, and then what we can do is at the next meeting, basically vote on the changes by article. Um, how does that sound? And if you don't have a change, by all means, you don't have to submit anything. But if you have something, and maybe if you see that someone else has the same change, we could maybe do this via Google Documents. And then like, if you have one that's pretty much similar to someone else's, we can combine them. And then we can just vote on those changes to the bylaw. Um, uh, Will? Yeah, I did have a, just a clarifying question. And, and my question is more so from a, uh, this being very new for me, and wanting to understand, that's why I kind of second the motion, like, hey, I want to hear people talk, just so I can mm -hmm. kind of gain a greater perspective. Mm -hmm. for, so for me, 
when I read, it serves as a channel for public concerns, advice, and information to reach the board. Is there a place I can go to to look for past concerns that were expressed by the community and then look at, okay, what were the actual actionable items done by the board from the concerns that PCAC um, expressed before? Yes. Yes. So um, thank you, Mr. Epps. On board docs, um, you and maybe staff can support with this as well, mm -hmm. but you can search like past PCAC meetings and you can see the minutes and the notes. And you can also look at what other counties are doing or have done and see their minutes and their notes. Um, you can also look at like when people give public testimony at the board. And oftentimes uh, you'll, you'll see just if you watch board meetings, like what those responses are, maybe like the meeting following, there might be some responses, but you know, I certainly uh, wouldn't mind helping you kind of think through and use uh, what, uh, what's available. <clears throat> so um, I don't know if I, as the motion maker can make an amendment to this, Nia, uh, Mr. Newsom, you might have to help me out here, but <laughs> Carletta, um, but I think I want to say. <laughs> Ms. Adam Stafford, can I offer uh, advice? Yes, please. I, I advise you to ask for a motion to table. Table, yeah. that's it. Table, <laughs> exactly table, right. table yeah, the go. motion. Yeah, table the motion to um, pass the bylaws and then uh, ask for a second and if there are no objections, then this will be tabled. I also want to include the point of us bringing our recommendations to the next meeting, though. Well, you can do that, or you can just instruct people to do it. I'll leave okay. that up. We'll just instruct you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. I think I got that one. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that. Um, so I would like to ask for a motion to table this until our next meeting. I motion that we table the discussion for the next meeting or the vote for the next meeting and the discussion. A second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Thank you. And so Aye. I'm going to ask uh, that what we'll do is we will make this an editable document and we will ask uh, if folks can. Um, you know, put um, any uh, ideas that they may have in the comments section of the Google document, and then we will compile a list of recommendations to vote on um, at our next meeting and pass the bylaws. Thank you so much. And Mia, sorry, your hand is up. Yes, I yes. need to know who made that second. Ms. Milhouse moved, but who seconded that? Kira Walker. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Adams, the, the other issue, other point I want to make is in order to be uh, compliant with the Open Meetings Act, we're going to have to make sure whatever gets shared on the Google Doc is shared with the public. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that reminder and thank you everyone for that great discussion. So um, now, um, if that's all right with everyone, we'll move on to item 2.2, which uh, is the election of officers, uh, the chair, vice chair, and recording secretary. So with that, I open the floor for nominations, starting with the chair. Are, are we self-nominating or are we just picking someone out the masses? So just yeah, and if y'all can if y'all can use the hand raise feature, that helps me to make sure that I call on you. Um, yeah, so you can uh, just if you'd like to nominate yourself or nominate someone, um, you can do that at this time. Then the person can accept the nomination, um, and then we'll we'll motion to um, close the nominations. All right, go ahead, Ms. Milhouse. Oh, I, I was putting it down. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was trying to hit it and close it at the same time. I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh-oh. 
Okay, uh, Dr. Porter? Yes, I would like to uh, nominate Ms. Milhouse. Okay, uh, thank you. And Ms. Milhouse, do you accept that nomination? Ms. Lundy, thank you. <laughs> um, that wasn't Ms. Lundy, that was Dr. Porter. Dr. Port, Dr. Porter. Was it Dr. Porter? Mm -hmm. Well, who yes. thank you, I'll accept, I'll accept. Okay. I need to go pray for a minute, but I'll accept it. <laughs> Are there any uh, further nominations, uh, Dr. Jackson? Not for this position, no. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, are there any uh, further nominations for chair? Chair, I call on everyone. Can we close on? All the right. Seat? So it. Oh, I, would you say, Dr. Porter? Oh no, I was asking. Could we close on the set one name? I was just going to ask. May I make a motion to close <laughs> on that particular nomination? Or that I was just saying. I was just going to say. Hearing none, may I have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Okay, may I have a second? Second. All right. Um, are there any objections to closing nominations? Okay, hearing none, nominations are closed. All right, you will see a poll on the screen that will allow you to vote for the position of chair. Um, please vote at this time. This uh, Adam Stafford. Can you hear mm -hmm. me? This is Mia. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, we're having technical difficulties. Oh, deploying uh, the poll. Well, yeah, we launched the poll, but it's not it's not coming up properly. So the nominations were uh, Dolores Millhouse. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Porter, I believe. No, I think I think it was just Dr. Uh, I think it was just Ms. Millhouse. Oh, okay. So we're going to close on that said name, right? We're going to close on that name. Okay. All right, so we won't take a, 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 a vote at this time, right? We'll just, did, did, for the record, do we still need to take the vote? I think so. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so we'll just, um, we'll just call the roll and we'll just take the vote that way. That's fine. Okay, um, Mia, you can go ahead and call the roll. Thank you. Um, we now have Reverend Dr. Orlando Germain Vigo. Oh, there you go. There you go. My apologies. Welcome. Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clarence Dixon. Yes. Mr. Will Epps. Yes. Ms. Satiria Hollinshed. Yes. Dr. Sheila Jackson. Yes. Ms. Carletta, Carletta Lundy. Yes. Ms. Adrian Mayo Brown. Yes. Ms. Dolores Milhouse. Yes. Dr. Sharon Porter. Yes. Mr. T. Carter Ross. Yes. Ms. Keisha Thorpe. Ms. Kira Walker? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Robin Welsh? Yes. Ms. Talise Wood? Yes. Mrs. Adam Stafford? A yes. All right, the vote has been completed and the chair is Ms. Dolores Woolhouse. Congratulations. So I open the floor for nominations starting with the vice chair. And I see Dr. Sheila Jackson's hand up. All right. Yes, I nominate Mr. Will Epps for vice chair. Okay, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Okay, are there any further nominations? Yes. Uh, Ms. Ms. Carletta Lundy? Yes, I nominate Mr. T. Carter. Okay, um, Mr. Carter Ross, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Okay. All right. May I have a motion? Are there any further nominations? Sorry. All 
Right. Um, may I have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Okay. May I have a second? A second. Okay. Are there any objections to closing the nominations? Hearing none, the nominations are closed. So at this time, um, we will vote on each of the nominees um, and we will do it via roll call. And uh, we will begin with uh, Mr. Epps. Okay. Reverend Dr. Orlando Bego, Bego? Bego, correct. Bego. <laughs> uh, yes. Mr. Clarence Dixon. Yes. Mr. Will Epps. Yes. Ms. Centuria Hollinshed. Yes. Dr. Sheila Jackson. Yes. Ms. Carletta Lundy. You know, I voted for Mr. T. Carter. <laughs> okay, so that's a no. Yeah. Mrs. Adrienne Brown. Yes. Ms. Dolores Milhouse. Yes. Dr. Sharon Porter. Yes. Mr. T. Carter Ross. No. Ms. Keisha Thorpe. Ms. Kira Walker. Yes. Mrs. Robin Welsh. Mrs. Robin Welsh. Yes. Ms. Delise Wood? Yes. Ms. Adams Stafford? Um, I abstain. I actually don't think, I don't know that I'm supposed to be voting on these. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you are. Well, I, I think you are that. our advisor, but I don't think. I don't think I'm supposed to be voting. So have a vote. abstain, you right. <laughs> please. Right. Thank you. Um, all right. Okay. Thank you. Um, did All right. Vote for Mr. Carter Ross. Yes. Now we'll do the vote for Mr. Carter Ross. Mm -hmm. Reverend Dr. Orlando Jermaine Vigo. Vigo. Orlando, yes. <clears throat> no. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clarence Dixon. Yes. You vote yes for both of he them. He can't. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Mr. Will Epps. No. Ms. Centuria Hollinshed. No. Dr. Sheila Jackson. No. Ms. Carletta Lundy. Yes. Ms. Adrian Mayo Brown. No. Ms. Dolores Milhouse. No. Dr. Sharon Porter. Uh, no. Mr. T. Carter Ross. Yes. Ms. Keisha Thorpe. Ms. Kira Walker? No. Ms. Robin Welsh? No. Ms. Talise Wood? No. Okay. With a vote of, I'll vote over top of something, I'm sorry. Uh, one, two, three, 10 for Mr. Epps and two for Mr. Ross. Mr. Epps wins. All right, uh, the vote has been completed and the vice chair is Mr. Will Epps. So thank you all very much. Um, and I uh, now I'm opening the floor for nominations starting with the recording secretary. Um, any nominations? All right, Ms. Walker. I want to nominate anyone else. I'll nominate myself. I'll self-nominate. All right. <laughs> okay. And I appreciate you all being just such um, good sports about this. Uh, you know, we would have had a technical, we would have done this with a technical poll 
I really appreciate you all just jumping in here. So everyone, thank you. I really do. Um, I appreciate that. So do you, uh, okay, well, are there any further nominations? Okay. I move that we close the nominations for secretary. Okay, may I have a second? Second it. All right. Are there any objections to closing the nominations? No. All right, hearing none, the nominations are closed. So uh, we will go ahead and vote at this time. Dr. Reverend Dr. Orlando Bago? Yes. Mr. Clarence Dixon? Yes. Mr. Will Epps? Yes. Ms. Satirio Hollinshed? <clears throat> yes. Dr. Sheila Jackson? Yes. Ms. Carletta Lundy? Yes. Ms. Adrian Mayo Brown? Yes. Ms. Dolores Milhouse? Yes. Dr. Sharon Porter? Yes. Mr. T. Carter Ross? Yes. Ms. Keisha Thorpe? Ms. Kira Walker? Yes. Mrs. Robin Welsh? Yes. Lisa Wood? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, the vote has been completed. And the recording secretary is Ms. Kira Walker. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to move on now to item 2.3, um, which will choose the next virtual meeting date and time and establish a schedule for the year. Um, so the Board staff and I were making the suggestion that we meet uh, the first Thursdays of each month. Um, and that will allow us the opportunity to then, if there would be some reporting to the board, that we would have some time to support in preparing that and being able to, to give a report to the board um, as a standing item, um, hopefully monthly. And so I wanted to see you know, what folks thought about that. So um, may I have a motion to accept uh, the meeting date and time for the year as um, the first Thursday of each month at 7 p.m. for the year. Um, may I have a motion to accept that. Um, Jode, do you wanna make a point of information or do we wanna wait till the discussion? Just a point of information. Okay. I don't know if this makes any difference. I just want you to be aware of it. The 6th of October is the first Thursday in October. There is a, um, a annual conference of MAVE in Annapolis. Maybe mm -hmm. that doesn't make a difference. I just want you to know. Yeah, that. no, thank you. I appreciate you letting me know that. And then the 3rd of uh, November is the first Thursday in November. Um, and that's being reserved for um, oral argument mm -hmm. um, by the board. And the first uh, Thursday in December, December 1st is the um, NABSE annual conference at the National Harvey. So I, I don't know if that, and it does make a difference, but I just want you to know about them. No, oh, thank you for letting me know. I, um, I don't think, I don't know that I'll be attending um, those events uh, except for the oral arguments, um, but I, I do appreciate you letting me know about those to have on my radar, so. All right. So may I have a motion? Okay, uh, Dr. Jackson. Actually, I had a question, but do we have a question after the motion? Yeah, after the second, we can okay. discuss. Mm -hmm. So move. Thank you, may I have a second? Second. Okay, so we can open it up for discussion now. Um, go ahead, Dr. Jackson. Uh, my question, um, my question is uh, regarding scheduling. Uh, I know that Thursdays are typically Board of Education meeting nights, uh, and I'm sure you didn't choose any Board of Education meeting nights. But I was wondering, is do you think did you all think Thursday is the best night as opposed to a Wednesday? I know Tuesdays are typically PTA or parent meeting nights, but I was wondering about a possible Wednesday as an option. 
Yeah, so we we typically meet the second and the fourth okay. Thursdays, and then we have oral arguments in between there. Okay. Um, so you know, consistent with Thursdays, you know that I think this we were just trying to think of you know making something that would be consistent each month. Got it. That was the okay. original thought there. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Hollinshed. That was my same question is, are we open to doing a Wednesday meeting versus a Thursday meeting? Um, because I have a standing commitment, so I would always be in the car on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. I was just seeing if anyone was open to a Wednesday meeting versus Thursday. Uh, Mr. Epps? Yes, my preference is also Wednesday. Okay. So maybe what we could do here, um, if I could uh, get uh, someone could make an amendment or uh, just basically say that they'd like to change the date to the first Wednesdays and then we could vote on that. And if that fails, then we can go to the first Thursday. How does that sound? Okay. So I think I just need a, someone to make a, a motion that we um, have the meetings the first Wednesdays of each month at seven, and then we'll vote on that. And then if that fails, we'll go to Thursday. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Hollinshed. So I make a motion that we uh, meet the first Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. Okay, um, it's, uh, can I, okay, so we have a motion. Second. Second. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and if there's no discussion here, let's take a vote on that. So um, Mia, you can call the roll. And, and this is a um, or yes, is that you would like to have the meetings on Wednesday. Reverend Dr. Orlando Obego. Yes. Mr. Clarence Dixon? No. Mr. Will Epps? Yes. Ms. Centuria Hollinshed? Yes. Dr. Sheila Jackson? Yes. Ms. Carletta Lundy? Yes. Ms. Adrienne Mayo Brown? Yes. Ms. Dolores Milhouse? No. <clears throat> Dr. Sharon Porter? No. Mr. T. Carter Ross? Yes. Ms. Keisha Thorpe? Ms. Kira Walker? No. Mrs. Robin Welsh? Yes. Ms. Talise Woods. Wood. No. Okay, the ayes have it uh, with a vote of eight to five. Okay, so we will then move that time to meet virtually Wednesday, the first Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. Okay. All right. Some point of information. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it possible um, that we could revisit the time given, because um, we want to make sure all the members can be present and be comfortable with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Is it possible we can revisit the time at some point, maybe in six months or so? Yeah, and I think okay. maybe that's something the chair um, and the okay. chair could, yeah. Just putting it out there. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> So um, in terms of follow-ups and next steps, um, so any follow-ups from our special meeting will be posted on board docs and uh, the P PCAC bylaws, uh, we will create um, an opportunity. We will, everyone has a draft version of them now. And so we will ask for those recommendations and provide you with some guidelines on when to send those in and we'll compile them for us to vote. Um, and post those on board docs as well. Uh, and then once we do that, uh, they'll be sent to the board for approval. 
And so our next meeting date will be, I believe that will be um, the 5th of October at 7 p.m. All right. So I look at us. It is 8.01. Can we just give ourselves a round of applause? <laughs> look, look at us. It is 8.01. <laughs> I want to thank you, everyone, for a great meeting. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? Question. Uh, can you ask, ask is it is it like a point of information you want to add or discuss it is a point of information yes, go ahead <laughs> before we adjourn if we have announcements to share with our committee when do we go about sharing that or do we get that to our chair ahead of time um, um if like enough things that you want the entire committee to know yes um if you could let me, let me just check, cause you know, we, we wanna make sure that we don't go against the, the OMA, the Open Meetings Act. Like, and I think if we're communicating via email on specific items then it can be, you know, so just let me research and I will, we will get that information to you. But th that's yeah. a great question. Yeah. So I'll get that to you. Thanks okay. Dr. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? I think motion that we adjourn the meeting. Okay, thank you. All right, second. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the great work that you all are going to do this year. So thanks again. All right, have a good evening. Guys. Thank you. Have a great evening. Have a good evening, um, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. You can stop.